were you thinking? The museum. That was my event. Did you think I wouldn't find out? Shut up. I thought I could control my sister as long as tongue was out of the picture. But nothing's changed. I should have expected that you'd succumb to Jeanette's influence like all the others. But how dare you! Don't lie to me! Jeanette already confessed she tricked you into doing it. It was probably all Tongue's idea. I'll deal with them later. But that's still no excuse for you ruining my museum. Excellent. I'll take that. However, Jeanette claimed you did it for her. But let's say I believe you. After all, you've acted decently and rationally up to now. I imagine you'd still like me to call off the feud. There's only one problem. If Tung gets word that I threatened Jeanette, which he most certainly already has, it's not likely he'll believe me. So, in order to call off the feud, you're going to have to convince Jeanette to forgive me first. I made some threats against my sister. Idle threats, involving fire and her impious satin sheets. She took them quite seriously, and is avoiding me. I want to meet with her, and explain that they were said in the heat of the moment. I asked her to meet me at the Surfside Diner, to reconcile. But I'm busy with the club and my other endeavors. I'd like you to go to the diner and promise her that I don't plan to take any action against her. Wait for her in the back booth, near the phones. I want to see my sister. Yes, I'll call it off once I've spoken with her myself. Just do what I ask. I'm terribly sorry about that. My sister was just furious about your refusal to take part in her designs, so she sent those men to kill you. But I'm going to make sure it never happens again. Drop by. We'll take care of this tongue business. <laughs> She's crazy! Help!
stay out of this. To think anyone would risk their life for this filthy, tainted waste of blood. This will just make it easier to kill both of you. Help! Save me and I'll help you find Bertram! I swear! Shut up, Jeanette! I warned you to stay away from Tongue. He's turned you against me. I always looked out for you, but you couldn't stand my success. You had to meddle, didn't you? I didn't want it to end like this, but you forced me! You never gave me any credit for anything, Therese. I was the one calling the shots. Bertram was dancing on my leash. How does it feel to know that I beat you? Isn't it obvious? I'm about to rid the night of this deviant, backstabbing whore! Do you realize that despite her condition, she still... fornicates with kind, no less? So despicable. So unclean! You're one to talk, dear sister. Or should I say daddy's little girl? Do you want to know just how depraved the Baron of Santa Monica can be? Shut up, Jeanette. You'd love the world to think you're a saint. When you thought I was asleep, I used to hear father come in at night. I heard him whisper how much he loved you in your ear before he... Don't finish that sentence or you're dead. Had his way with you. And he didn't have to force you. You went limp and became his plaything. Do you think I didn't hear it? Night after night? Always the obedient daughter until... Shut up. Just shut up! Would you like to tell the story? <laughs> she makes herself out to be the virgin queen of the night, pious as a nun, stable as the Earth's orbit. But it's all an act, isn't it? I'm the good girl. You're the wicked one. You've done nothing but plot against me when I had our best interests at heart. And despite that, I've always covered up your mistakes. I've taken care of you. And this is how you repay me? Taken care of me? You've done nothing but keep me down. Blame me for every mistake. Did you expect me to let you rule my life until the end of time? No, sister. You've had it coming since our last sunrise. Is that right, dear? If it wasn't for me, you would have never survived this long. Remember? They tried to separate us, but I refused. I chose this life and brought you into it so that we could stay together. Obviously, you've forgotten. She's a control freak. People, things, emotions. If she can't control something, she gets rid of it. And you're a wild animal. You'll rub up against anything that'll take you in for the night. Then when you're stuffed and bored, you bite the hand that fed you. Therese will never let you live. You've disappointed her. I used you, yes, but I didn't try to have you killed. Therese has no problem with killing, do you? Remember father? Father loved me. I was a good girl. I always did what I was told. You always hated that he loved me. You disobeyed him. You brought men home when he wasn't there. You were an awful daughter to him. Father came home drunk one day and mistook me for Therese. Because I'd fallen asleep in her bed. Don't listen to her. She's lying. Therese walked in while he was there and she saw me lying with him and so she went to the closet and pulled out his hunting shotgun, loaded it with deer shot and blew his mind out all over the silly clown wallpaper. That's a lie. Father killed himself because of Jeanette. She made him miserable. As I recall, he died with a smile on his face. The police sure did. They broke us up for a little while, remember? The first thing you did after your escape was find me. Enough! Don't say another word about that. So, sweet sister, is this how it has to end? I admit, I always knew this night might come. Well, any message you want me to give father? An apology? A love letter? I killed her. I didn't want her to go. I only wanted her to change. You understand, don't you? Poor, poor Therese. You wanted to find Bertram. He's at the old gas station in an empty oil tank. He'll help you because I'll ask him to. But you must keep your tongue tied tight about what happened this night. Understand? Don't hesitate to come see me once in a while. I'm going to be so lonely without Therese. I mean, I may need someone like you sometime, and I do get bored so easily. Maybe you could come by and cheer me up sometime.
Look who finally made it. Thought you'd never find me, did you, sweetheart? I've gotten good at knowing when I'm wanted. Ah, oh, so you're who I'm waiting on. Someone must have faith in you, Cupcake. That, or they want you out of the picture. <laughs> Interesting choice either way. The one and only. But don't bother with the introductions, fledgling. I know who you are. News travels down the kindred grapevine like wildfire. And that courtroom spat between LaCroix and Nines Rodriguez is a juicy little morsel. And you in the middle. <laughs> How interesting. Oh, you did, did you? Well, I wasn't worried. So why did you need to find me? What did you need? Hmm? Oh, never mind. The warehouse, though. I've been watching the place. The Sabbat has a bunch of low-life humans working day and night to move stuff through there. There's some major staging going on. As far as I can tell, the humans seem to know the score from the way they've been talking. I think most of them have aspirations of joining the next graduating class of shovelheads. Ugh, losers. Yeah, the Sabbat like everyone to know just who they're dealing with. So if you get in there and have to bust a few heads, don't feel bad. Think of it as upholding the masquerade. Yes, I can. Just tell me when you're ready, and we'll leave. Once you're there, however, you're on your own. You'll have to get into the place and plant the explosives in the middle office to take the whole structure down. Stop right there. here tonight. Boxes is all in everyone's face and shit. Didn't you hear? A new shipment came in. Some pretty serious hardware. Yeah, I heard. But what the fuck? We get that kind of shit in here all the time. What's so different about tonight? I don't know. Marcus is tense as a mother. Maybe he heard something. Freeze! <laughs>
Hey, hold it! You see something out there? Where? Out there, in the trains. I swear I saw something moving. Ain't nothing out here. You just scared them, John. What? Shit, I ain't scared of nothing. I'm scared for whoever decides to come and get a piece of this. Hey, quit waving that thing around. Fucking explosives all over the place in here. You trying to blow us up or something? Now who's fucking scared? Damn, little John. You all kinds of stupid. Shit, relax, Holmes. I'm in. Yo, Marcus was getting all crazy on people tonight, right? What the fuck? Something going down tonight. He knows something. We don't. I know you best keep your voice down, Holmes. Someone there? What can I pay you guys for? This is the big score, so do your gun. Hey, hold it, hold it.
Your handiwork, I presume? <laughs> Not experienced much in the creatures of the night, are you? For future reference, you might keep in mind that werewolves aren't in the habit of introducing themselves. I see my reputation for once does not precede me. My name is Beckett. I haven't been following you per se. We've just coincidentally been at the same places at the same time, for different reasons. So sorry if I unnerved you. Tell me, have you by chance seen or felt anything strange since your embrace? A ghost? Hm. Quite ordinary. I generally pay wraiths no mind. All but a few are willing to give up their secrets. Thin bloods. They're a fascination of mine. They are considered a weaker, more human-like kindred, hence the name, Thin Blood. But they are sired, same as any of us. I've heard a large concentration of them live in this city. They're one of the reasons I'm in Los Angeles. Most of my contacts here report sensing something unusual in the night air, like a sense of dread or pressure. But I'm not a native to these parts, so I can't tell if it's irregular. And since you're still fresh, perhaps you're not attuned to it. Pleasure meeting your acquaintance, but there are rumblings for me to discredit. We shall, I'm certain, meet again. Or never again. Good night, young one. And be careful, you're very likely being hunted by the Sabbat. <laughs> 